Earlier this week, I released a video on how to use Core Framework alongside Bricks Builder. In this quick video, I want to show you the steps you need to take to make sure that everything is working correctly. We're going to set up some best practices, and if you want to, at the end of this, you could literally save this out, and then every time you create a new site, you have everything set up for you. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to assume you've already have an account with Core Framework, you've set up the plugin inside Bricks Builder, and you are ready to go. So first of all, inside core framework, the first thing we're going to do is come into the preferences. And inside here, we need to set up something. And then we also need to set up inside Bricks itself. First thing you want to do is set your max screen width. Now, I set this to 1366, but you can set this to whatever you want. But we need to make sure this matches up exactly what we have inside Bricks itself. To do that, just go into any page with Bricks active, come into the settings section, and inside your theme styles, the first thing you want to do is probably create a theme style. You can name this whatever you want. Then open up your conditions and set this to be enabled on your entire website, unless for any reason you don't, but enable it, set up your conditions as you need them. Then we're going to come into the element container, and inside here, we're going to match up exactly what we have with the width inside Core Framework. In this case, 1366, but if you have something different, make sure that both are exactly the same. Then just go ahead and save this to make sure you've committed it. We are going to come back and make a few other alterations as well. Next, the agenda of breakpoints. Now, unfortunately, Core Framework's breakpoints and Bricks Builder's breakpoints are not the same. And we don't want to have anything funky going on when we're trying to make sure that everything looks and scales the way we want. So let's address that. Now, you can choose to work in this whichever way you want. You can match up the Bricks with Core Framework or Core Framework with Bricks. It's up to you. But all you need to do, first of all, is enable the function inside Bricks to be able to set custom breakpoints if you want to take that route. So come into settings, open up general, and scroll until you get to the custom breakpoints and enable this option. Hit regenerate CSS files to make sure everything is configured correctly. Coming back into Bricks, you'll see you have these three little dots with breakpoints active now. You may need to refresh your screen or reload the page if you don't see it. All you need to do is click on there, and you can see this allows us to customize our breakpoints. So we can create, or we can configure, or we can enable or disable any of our breakpoints. As you can see, this shows us all of the breakpoints that we currently have. And all we need to do is change these over to the values that we have inside Core Framework. So I'm going to do that by simply clicking on the Edit option. And then you can see we can set this to whatever we need. In this example, 1279 is the default. We can now change these. Once we're happy, we click, click on Update. And we can carry on doing that until all of them are set. Once that's done, you are good to go. Hit Save after we've closed this down. And everything should be committed. Now, once you've set those things up, there's lots of other things you can do, but there are a couple of basics that I do recommend. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways in which you can work with Core Framework and working with Bricks Builder. So first of all, let's take a look at the typography. If we open the typography tab, you can see that our typography is set inside here. Our minimum font and our maximum font and also the scale or ratio that's being used to scale things. And you can see we have a visual representation of this. We've also got the same for our headings. If we take a look at the first one, you can see the base is set to the medium. So this, in other words, is our 16 points and also our maximum 18, depending upon the size of our screen. Now, we can use that base value and transition that into Bricks Builder. To do that, again, come back into Bricks, open up your settings, come into your theme styles, and from there, we can set our typography. So let's open our typography options up, expand the body option, and from there, you can see by default, we have 15 pixels, but we can start using the variables that are part of Core Framework. So we can right click and you can see this will open up the little context pop up. And from here, we can choose our typography. Now we know that the base value is 16 or 18, depending upon the scale, and that's set to medium. So all we need to do is select that variable. And we're basically matching up exactly what we have as our base font size inside Core Framework. Simple as that. And this is where the beauty of it comes in. We can start using these variables. And then we know that if we make changes inside the core framework, they will be reflected throughout everything we do in our design. Now, using that same principle, we can set things up to have default values. We may want to set our section to have very specific padding applied to it every time we add a new section or container in. So what we can do is we can easily come into our padding section. And again, we can just link things up. We can right click, and from there, we can check our spacing, and we can say what spacing we want. So we may say we want to have this XL or large or extra small, whatever we want. So let's say XL, 
Now, every single time we add in a new section, we'll have this padding set up by default on all four sides. Now, one of the cool things about the core framework is that it's totally extendable. So we can customize and create our own definitions that we want. And we can also remove definitions that we don't want. Let's go take a look at how we can add things in. Let's click on Other. And let's say we want to make sure that every single time we create a new page that we have the page content set to a 100% vertical height. This means that our footer will always sit at the bottom of our page. It's very easy. What we can do is we can create either selector groups or variable groups. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a selector group. And if you kind of consider these to be a kind of group of options that you want to set up so you can create as many of these as you need to. Let's just set this to be default body. And then we can choose the selector, the property, and the value that goes with it. So we're going to choose body from here, which is the selector. We're going to choose minimum height. And our value in this example is going to be 100 VH. So now we've set the values that we want up for our body. So every single time we add a new page in, it will always take up 100% vertical height of the screen. All we need to do, save this, and then that will commit those changes and add everything in. Now, the beauty of this method is you can easily keep on adding content using the variables that we have set up as part of Core Framework, and you can set things up so every single time you want to use it, the default values are set up. And this means that you don't have to rely upon setting those values up inside bricks, inside the theme styles. You can use this to completely take control of everything. So, for example, as part of the body, you may also want to set your font size inside here. Now, we know that if we take a look at our typography, we've got our base is the text-m. Well, we could simply use that inside the other and add that value in, just simply adding another value in and set in our font size and use that variable here. And you can build up quite complex setups and then you could export this and use it where you want. But that's not all. We could also use this to override various different values that are used as part of Bricks Builder. And again, remove that reliance upon us having to set things up inside the customizer option in Bricks itself. Again, removing that need to use the theme styles and do everything inside Core Framework. Let me just give you one simple example. Let's create another selector group. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Name it something that makes sense to you. And what we can do here is we can use a cool function, which is the where function. As you can see, full colon, then the word where, and then what we want to target. Now, everything inside Bricks is pretty much preceded by a period or full stop, then B-R-X-E dash and the name of the element you want to target. In this example, the section element. So now we can set the property. So we can say padding, and we can now set the variable. So we can say we want the space, for example, to be set to large. And what we've done now is we've said that any time a section inside Bricks is created, add padding and use the variable of space L, large, whatever the value is there. And we can change that and we can add as many of these as we want into our overall set of definitions. Now, this is really just scratching the surface of how you could use Core Framework. But hopefully what this has demonstrated is some of the things that you can do to get you up and running and started in double quick time. And then make sure you speed up your deployment process and get to working a lot quicker with a lot of basic things set up. And also by going in and setting up the options to control brick styling inside Core Framework just to make things super simple and easy. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. But as always, I do welcome your feedback. Drop any comments, feedback, or anything else in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tatsu. Until next time, take care.